Okay, welcome back to CE 526. I want to talk about your, your road safety audit assignment. And because we are in the virtual format, the assignment actually does not involve your team going to the field, but instead one of you is going to the field and you know, just go to a nearby elementary school zone and, and study um, the situation as it exists. Now, oh, I have provided you with two different road safety audit sheets, the checklist. And what you will notice is that one of those checklists is much more comprehensive and one of them is specific to school zones. But what I want you to do as one of your team members is collecting the data on, in the field um, on, on video, what I want you guys to do is the rest of the team should look at different aspects of the the more comprehensive spreadsheet, uh, that one comes from Australian, uh, one of the Australian researchers. And, and I think this is made available by Australian Roads. So this is from Australia. So you'll, you'll see some things there that are sort of, you know, that are, that will be interesting to you. For, and you'll recognize that this is from a country where you drive on the left side of the road. So that's one thing you will notice. But in general, that, that is the road safety audit sheet that I found was the most comprehensive that I could find. And I want the rest of the team to take a look at that spread, uh, I mean, that checklist, take a look at the school checklist, which is less comprehensive, but I want you to adopt, basically strike out the items from your um, longer spreadsheet from Australia that are not applicable and add any items that you see in the school sheet that is still applicable to your uh, to your location. So I want you guys, the rest of the team, to come up with a checklist that you're going to fill up for your assignment. I want you to pay particular attention to signs, the, the traffic signs on the road, the traffic control devices, the major traffic control devices like, like, like the stop sign or the traffic signals, things like that. And then also look at the facilities as they exist for the pedestrians and bicyclists. So special attention to issues that might be faced by vulnerable road users. So, so looking at those three things, obviously I want you to look at the whole checklist, but I want you to pay special attention to those, uh, those three things. The advisory signs or the roadway signs in general, the traffic control devices, signals, stop signs, yield signs, and uh, issues related to pedestrians and bicyclists. And your job will be to come up with a comprehensive spread, I mean, checklist that is a combination of everything and that has the items that are not applicable to an urban school area, which I assume most of you are in, uh, just, just crossed out. If, if the things that don't apply to a urban arterial or an urban um, you know, connected road near a school zone, then you will just cross them out because I think there are some things about, about rural roads, there's something about rural slopes and things like that. So you should be able to cross those out from your spreadsheet. So what I want you to do is, I want you to be able to submit to me a link where you have edited out the more comprehensive spreadsheet for which the link I have provided to you. And I'm hoping your one of your team members will go out and collect the data and hopefully they'll be able to join back in and, and sort of look at your checklist and sort of comment on it is that, hey, I didn't notice this or I didn't notice this and so forth. But 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 that's okay. So so let's say you leave out leave in in the checklist one item. You leave in the checklist one item that your team member comes back and tells you that hey, I could not observe this. And that's okay. So what I want you to do then is as part of your presentation that you're going to do, that's going to be sort of your final deliverable for this. As part of the presentation, you could talk about those items that hey. We, we thought this item would be important when we were reviewing it on paper, but then on the field, we just did not see that issue occur or something like that. So I would be very interested in, in what, what your team comes up with and what are the discrepancies or what are the difficult to observe things that your uh, fifth team member that is going out to the field would notice. Okay, so I would be very interested in those things as well. So. To recap, 
the assignment for one of the team members is to go out in the field and collect the data, uh, collect the video data, video evidence, uh, pay a special attention again to signs, to traffic control devices, to pedestrian bicyclist issues, if you notice anything uh, with regards to crossing. Uh, and so you are looking for a situation that could potentially be hazardous. You know, they might meet all the standards, but they could potentially be uh, hazardous because the idea here is to look at the safety proactively. As for the rest of the team, I want you to download the checklist that I've provided to you, review them carefully, and from that, strike out anything that you think is not going to be relevant to an urban school site, uh, urban elementary school site. And, and I want you actually to see the strikeouts, like what you actually striked out from that checklist. And then compare notes with the, with the person who's actually getting the data and, and, and be able to comment on that. And, and I will have, by the time we end today, towards the end of the assignment, I've, uh, to the end of the class, once you guys have submitted your checklist, I'm gonna give you the, what's gonna be your assignment on the coming Thursday, where you guys, each of the groups will be presenting on their findings of the road safety audit via the video data, okay? So before the person who is actually collecting the data leaves, I want to ask you guys if you guys had any questions on what you guys are up to, what you guys, what everybody's doing. I'm assuming everybody knows who their group member is who's going out and walking to the elementary school site. Because I remember uh, talking to you guys yesterday and then almost all of you had a school in, in walking distance. So I'm very much looking forward to, um, to your visit and the video evidence that you collect and, uh, and, and then identify the school issue. So any questions about, about any of, uh, of the assignments that you guys are working on today? I've got one. So for the immediate, it's for the study area, is it just the immediate roads around the school or is it further than that? No, just immediate road around the school. So basically just sort of going around the school and maybe, you know, so yeah, just, just the area that's uh, the, the roads that kind of surround the school. Yeah. So don't, don't go too far from there. Yeah. All right. So we, we are interested in, you know, where they, where they put in those, uh, school speed limit signs, right? So, so they, those are usually very, very close to the school. So uh, so I'm interested in just the area that surrounds the school, the arterial roads or collector roads that are right near the school. We typically, when we go out to the field, we typically view a little bit broader area. You know, once you start seeing the school signs, because the school speed limit signs are in the more immediate vicinity, but if you go further out, there are school signs that occur at nearby intersections and crossings. They basically look at you know where um, where the kids' presence might be might be more likely, and and we review a little bit longer area than that. But I know that there is only one person who is actually going out to the field and recording. So for now, just the immediate sur surrounding roads, the school surrounding the school compound will be fine. Thank you. Other questions. Okay, so I will have, and then hopefully, you know, it won't take uh, the person who's actually uh, doing the video recording a whole lot of time there. So typically what I used to do is that this assignment of updating the checklist used to be an individual assignment. And then we used to do, um, you know, we used to do the, uh, we used to do the road safety audit assignment afterward as uh, you know, as as a group, and and update the like you know actually fill out the checklist as a group, and then do a presentation on that, and then we used to do a written report. But this year, I'm just asking you guys to just uh, to updating of the checklist as a group, and then delivering the the presentation, and and I'll give you the contours of the presentation by the time we end this class, and uh, so that's the plan. Um, so with that, if there are no further questions, I will have groups sort of get together and I'll open the breakout rooms and I and you guys can all go into your breakout rooms. Uh, 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 
I'll open five breakout rooms here. And if you guys have any other questions, feel free to uh, holler me. And if you think that that question is, is a general question, not specific to your group, you can also come into the main room and ask me as well. So I will let you guys choose your uh, rooms. I will pause the recording here as well, unless there are more questions. Hi, welcome back, folks. Any questions? So how? I hope the data collection went well for every group. Any 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 questions or concerns that you might have seen at the data collection site for the volunteers who went out to the field alone? Any any comments on the data collection process? I know it's not ideal. You are really want to be able to experience as a team what the situation looks like. But I hope we were able to do the next best thing. At least have one person go out to the field and look at the look at the school locations. Okay, so I'm not hearing any comments. That's great. Uh, and so what I want to do is I want to talk a little bit about what happens next. So for the next step, what you guys have is, is your next assignment to wrap up the road field safety road, road safety audit project. We are going to we're going to do a presentation as a group. So you are all going to present on next Thursday on what your findings are now that you have an updated checklist. And it looks like all of the groups have been able to even submit the updated checklist. So that's that's great. And I know I have some grading items piling up. I already I already graded the report. I just need to enter the information for you guys for the crash frequency report. I started grading the the project, and I'm I'm seeing some things there. I mean, not the project, but the, in, the CMF estimation as homework assignment. I'm noting a few noticing a few things there. So please be sure to review the solutions when I'm going to post them today and make sure that you review them. But in the meantime, and I've, I know you guys have already submitted the road safety audit assignment as well, so that's great, but it means that I have more things to make sure that I grade. And I will grade them um, by Friday. So definitely by tomorrow, you should have pretty much all of your grades that you've worked, that you've submitted. Uh, you should be able to see them on Canvas. Okay. So beyond the grading now, so I was talking, so what, what we are going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and share the screen with you and talk about what you're going to present on in the uh, on next, next Thursday session. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and open, let's see. <clears throat> so you should be able to see that field safety, road field safety assessment project online here. Let me make sure that I go into that student view so I see what you guys will see. So this is the field safety assessment project that we are working on. So the deliverable number one, which is due at 11 o'clock today, but it looks like you guys have all submitted it. That's great. You have this checklist and your deliverable number two for this project is essentially a group presentation, either a presentation file or a Google slide link here. That is due by May 11, March 11th rather. That's due before the lab on March 11th. So if you click on this deliverable, you will be able to see what I've provided you there. What I've done is I've given you a couple of case studies. So if you look at any one of those case studies, you could see that they provide the details. And again, you don't have to provide that information in your presentation exactly in this format, but it'll still be valuable to know in your context of your presentation, whether it's an urban or suburban area, you know, you're so you won't talk about the design stage necessarily because you don't have that. So you're doing basically RSA of existing roads. So you're doing an existing roads network RSA. You provide like maybe uh, some information like this, where you provide the, the location for us, location for it. Like maybe some aerial view, maybe some pictures that you took at the site or the video or snapshots of those videos. And then you could talk about, you know, so for example, in, in traffic signal, this is what you want for your signal displays, right? Your signal display should be visible and conspicuous at all times. If you notice that that was not the case, then you provide that information and you will find some other things like, you know, uh, from your road safe. So this doesn't have to be the first column that can come from your checklist, right? You have your checklist that's much more detailed than, than even these things. So, so you could take the information, the safety issue description from there, 
and then you could provide whether whether or not some things meet that criteria or not. And then you could talk about suggestions for improvement for each of those things. And one extra thing that I want you to do is that once you provide any low cost safety improvement suggestions for your school site, I want you to be able to look for that in the CMF clearinghouse. So CMF clearinghouse is the crash modification factor clearinghouse. And you can find a lot of different you know, safety improvements. So for example, if you provide that you know, we need high visibility yellow continental type crosswalk at school, if that's something that you're providing, I would very much like you to kind of report what is the CMF available from the clearinghouse. So maybe you can provide some information from this table that, hey, uh, the CMF for this is 63, the crash reduction factor is 37%. So you can reduce crashes by 37%. So each improvement that you provide based on your road safety audit results, I want you to be able to see if you could check on the CMF clearinghouse and find, um, find uh, the crash modification factor for it. Okay? And I want you to report that in, al along with your improvement. Okay? So you, and you can, and again, you don't have to search just for schools. Like you could have, you know, some improvements that you, that you suggest. So for example, if you're suggesting, I'm sorry. Let's say you're suggesting, let's say some other improvement here. So you select <clears throat> let's say you recommend that okay, we need to stop the right turn on red, just for an example. Okay, so so closing out right turn on red. So you could search here. Okay, you can search here right turn on red, and you might be able to see. Prohibit right turn on red. So if you're, if that's what you're recommending. Okay, so it cannot be rated because, okay, so that's the, so you can just say that, you know, you could not find that, but you could say, okay, permit right turn on red. So there is crash production factor for that. So you could see, so the highest rated among that is like this one, right? So this is basically for, I think it's for it's bold, it's a bold one. So bold text is used for most reliable CMF. So you could see that, Permitting right turn on red leads to 60% increase in crashes because CMF is 1.6. So you could report that. Okay. So you could report and, and some of these. So if you see like more than one crash modification factor, you can just report one of the ones that have the highest quality there. Okay. So that's what I'm looking for in terms of your final presentation. And if you go back to your you go back to your presentation rubric, you could see what I'm looking for. I'm looking for detailed evidence of issues identified uh, from your updated checklist, potential solutions, and suggested improvement, including low cost ones, and then a review of Federal Highway Administration CMF Clearinghouse to report the CMFs for the improvements that you're suggesting. Okay, And then for the visual aid use in presentation organization, I hope you'll pay attention to the feedback that I provided to you for presentations in the last times of last presentation. So please take a look at that and then delivery the same thing. You know, you, you want to be clear in your delivery, maybe rehearse your presentation at least one time before with your team and try to avoid the verbal clutches. And I know it, it's kind of a big deal coming from me because I personally cannot avoid some of those uh, you know, verbal clutches, um, so crutches. So we all make mistakes, but try to see if you can minimize those as, as you're speaking, okay? So are there now any questions about what you're doing for the road safety audit assignment for the remaining parts of it? Again, you can type up your questions in chat or you can raise your hand to ask them here now. Any questions on what you guys are doing for your road safety audit assignment. Hmm. 
No questions? Okay, that's perfect then. Yeah, so you guys are all set then. You can, you can work, I can open up the breakout rooms again so you can go back and start working on those, but just work with your groups. So if you have things that are, you know, uh, so I hope, and I hope you guys can update on the updated checklist for the person who actually went out to the field. And hopefully, you, when you're looking at the checklist and you're finding these case studies that are example provided, maybe it's possible that you might have to go out in the field and check on some things. Uh, it's not required that you go out in the field again. I'm not requiring it, but if you think that it might be necessary, I'm not stopping you either. So again, just don't feel pressure to go out back in the field. So don't, don't think that you have to go out in the field and collect more data. But if you think that's, that's something that you could do on your own, that, that's fine, that's great. But again, it's not a requirement. I'm not asking you to do that. And, um, and just, you know, something that, and, you know, if there are things that require you to go out in the field, but you can't do that, it's okay to note that in your presentation that, yeah, if, if I, we had the opportunity to go back out in the field, we could have observed this or something like that. That's okay. I'm not going to take points off for that. If that becomes a question. Okay. So before I let you guys go, go, go back to your breakout rooms because I'm not seeing any questions, Katie helpfully reminds me that there is an ITE meeting with the Wallace group. So I recommend strongly that you guys go attend that. Uh, if you're an ITE member, if you're not an ITE member, what the heck are you doing? So you should be an ITE member. Uh, if you're not, then maybe there's still time to become a member. So, so please go ahead and do that. Um, but if your schedule permits, I would strongly recommend that you attend the the meeting at 11 o'clock, 11.10 today. Okay, so I think uh, Will has provided the link to the meeting today in the chat box. Thank you, Will, uh, appreciate that. So yeah, so the link is there. So I'm not sure how you're gonna enforce if somebody's not an IT member. So this is your chance. Even if you are not an IT member, you can attend the meeting because Will has helpfully provided the link. So, so, so go attend that. I think it's it's nice to be able to connect with professionals and not always just listen to the professors. So please go ahead and do that at 11 o'clock. But in the meantime, I'll reopen the breakout rooms. If you have any questions, comments, let me know. And I will start, you know, posting your grades pretty soon. So I'm hoping by Friday, by tomorrow afternoon, you should pretty much have all the grades of all the works that you've submitted. Okay. All right, and uh, one more thing, in the next session, I will talk about the topics that you guys submitted that you wanted to talk about uh, at the beginning of the class sessions. So I'll go over those topics and at least provide some more information on where you can dig up those things. And I'll try to explain as much as I can. And I'll try to wrap up, you know, for each of the topics that we learned in the class, the most important takeaways. So I'll try to summarize that. Also, either on Tuesday or on Thursday after your presentations, so that you you know you're prepared for your final exam. But even more beyond that, you're prepared for, uh, you know, when you when you go out and become a traffic safety professional. Okay, so with that, I will reopen the breakout rooms number one through five. Uh, create five let participants. So open the breakout rooms. You can go to your breakout rooms uh, per your group members and work on your presentations. And we will not have that much time to work on it on Tuesday. So make sure that you are making progress. Um, and, and you might have to meet outside the class virtually, of course, but you might have to do that. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. If you, any questions come up, just holler back for me and I will join your breakout rooms. And I'll be here till 11. And I do have to close because. Uh, close because I have another meeting at uh, 11 o'clock, not the IT meeting, unfortunately, today, but I do have another thing that, that's ongoing. I won't be able to attend. Uh, I won't be able to stick around beyond 11. So I will be closing out the room and the breakout rooms around right around 11. Thank you very much, guys. Oh, um, Professor Pandey, yes, um, I we couldn't get the school safety checklist, not the long one, the shorter one, 
Um, we couldn't get that onto an edible document. How did you want me to send it to you? So you can add to that. Like, so, so you don't have to, you know, so you can add to the major checklist. So there are items that are not already covered in the major checklist. You can just add some of those items into your sub, uh, checklist that you're planning to submit anyway. Could you do that? Okay, because um, we just filled out the PDF separately. Right, so, and, and you could add a page to the PDF, right? Yeah. Maybe maybe you can create a PDF or like, you know, maybe insert a page, an empty page, and then add text to that. And that text okay. should come from the school safety checklist. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you, Emily. Mm -hmm.